So I'm playing one of my favorite games ever, Soul Calibur. And I just, we, I run into this kinky looking android albino daredevil wannabe chick, 2B. And she's just kicking my ass over and over, just making straight work of me. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? Who is this chick? So I do some investigative research and find out she's from a game, Near Automata. And believe me, by the time you finish Near Automata, you still won't have any idea what Near Automata even means. Anyways, let's give the game a try. Alright, so I was super excited to jump into this game. I had read some reviews before starting, and apparently it was bringing grown men to tears. They were having transcendental experiences. Some even claimed to have left their families to live a life of full android cosplay. I was personally finding the game to be pretty good, but I just wasn't connecting to it like these other guys. I mean, what was it about this game that they were so in love with? I just, I didn't understand. What was it about this world that just made them fall in love? I must have been missing something, but that all changed when I made it to the robot gangbang. Okay, that is something else. They don't have any feelings. They're just Bro. imitating human speech. Let's take them out. Bro. What? Bro. This scene also really bothered me because I show up with good intentions like, hey guys, I'm, I'm here for the orgy. And look, they get so upset with me. They get so upset with me and they're just like, no, you're not joining in. This is a machine. What? That's what 2B looks like under there? Okay, now I'm straight pissed. So you may not know this, but the game actually takes place just a few years into the future, shortly after President Biden's Build Back Better plans have been completed. Guns have been banned, of course, and so instead the enemy actually shoots these slow-moving purple balls at you. Face masks are still in full effect, but some people actually haven't learned how to wear them properly and have been putting them over their eyes instead. Now, in terms of the gameplay itself, one of my biggest gripes was the shooting sections. It was just so tedious. There was zero challenge and you'd spend a lot of time just standing in one spot, maybe moving around like I am here, and just shooting and shooting and shooting and watching their health bars slowly, painfully slowly deplete. I mean, ugh, just, uh, what were they thinking? I don't know. This is fun. I'm having fun. The game also features some insane platforming sections. You thought Super Meat Boy was tough. Kill it. I don't trust it. Kill it. Oh, catching? Oh, okay. This is some Nightmare Before Christmas type shit. Huh? Hey, where am I? Um, what's that? Hey there, guys. What's up? Aw, he's just looking for a this friend. This seems weird, Tubi. Let's kill what? it. Wait, what? No good <laughs> Let's idea. Let's kill it. No! What the fuck? This is nice. This little, oh, what's that? What's that sound? Oh, nothing weird about that. Just a baby carriage in the middle of the forest. Some nice little bassinet here. What is it? Is it baby? Is this their oh, king? That's weird looking. 9S, we should kill it. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna do that anyway. Han, employ a check module and a logic virus vaccine. <laughs> Logic virus vaccine must be made by Pfizer. You know what? Now the game intro makes complete sense. I thought it was weird at first, but totally makes sense now. Brought to you by Pfizer. What? Uh, okay. Oh, oh, jeez! Oh, what's happening? Yeah, so sadly the game is really loaded with toxic masculinity and rape culture references. Right here, one of my good friends has actually invited me to come meet him at an abandoned warehouse. This isn't uh, suspicious, I'm sure Pascal just wants to chat. You should probably be careful. Machines can be rather unpredictable. But I find that language contains many ways to hide one's true intentions. It certainly does. Pascal brought me up into the abandoned warehouse to rape me. Stay away from me! 
dying. That's pretty cool. I like it. Overall, the boss encounters were by far the best part of this game. Yeah, it's where the game really shines. That is until you reach this big ball motherfucker who's just ridiculously cheap. I mean, look at this. There's no rhyme or reason. I don't know how you're supposed to dodge that. But yeah, overall, the bosses were a ton of fun. He just needs some little some oil. Just like the tin man. Alright. So I guess this is like the end game. Two hours later. Just a little bit of oil and get the gears moving again. Lubricate those gears up. Just get right here. This is this is tedious. Pretty much a prime example of how this entire game plays. It's quite a tedious game. Uh, like what? Like, uh, oh, there we go. Oh no! <laughs> So you can't even go fast, you just gotta slowly walk over. Hey, what? <laughs> what are you kidding me? <laughs> so Operator 210 to Unit 9S. Come in 9S. 9S here, go ahead. Huh. The Yorha troops have commenced. So I guess you get to play the whole game again as 9S? That's actually that's actually pretty neat. So you can play the whole game from a different perspective, and it doesn't seem like it's just the same thing with a different character. Wow. Well, let's go meet up with 2B. What? <laughs> he was never heard from again. Uh, <laughs> what? Final verdict. I liked it. I didn't love it. Like and subscribe for more.